<clears throat> Hello, welcome to the July 27th edition of the Chaos Weekly Community Call. I am Elizabeth, the Chaos Community Manager. I'm really happy to see everyone here. We do have a light group today. Totally awesome, fine. It'll work. We'll make it work. Um, and again, you can always feel free to keep your cameras off. We don't really mind here. Just chat or you can use the, also the raise hand emoji that also works if you have something to say or you can just bust in, that's totally fine too. Um, drop the minutes in the, in the chat, but uh, I see we have a couple of people filtering in, so we'll just do that one more time. And um, yeah, we have a pretty light agenda too, so it, it actually works out great. Uh, we'll just jump right into it. Um, the first item on the agenda is the metrics model committee that we had talked about last week. Um, wasn't sure if we had had any movement or update on this. It looks like Matt G was leading it. Does anybody else have an update or is there anything to report on that? Uh, there, there's no movement on that. Not yet. Okay, okay no worries. Um, we'll just kind of wait on that then and we'll talk about that again next week. You guys want to maybe use this moment to um, book a kickoff or how should we, what are your thoughts, Matt? Um, Matt's actually not on the call. Oh, okay. So we'll maybe wait. He said he wanted to lead or he volunteered to lead. So. Um, yes, that makes good sense. I'll, I'll stand down. Thank you. Oh, no, you're fine. You're totally fine. I was just looking to see who else was on the committee. It was you and Kevin and Matt C, Sean and Nod. And almost Matt C and Matt G aren't here, but the rest of you are. If you wanted to settle on a date or something like that, or a plan of action, totally fine. We can just let Matt G know. <laughs> What's the Met metrics model committee? I wasn't here for this before. Oh, no worries. So, um, so last week we talked about um, different ways to bring metrics together. Um, and we decided, because just to take a step back, the Asia Pacific committee had put together a very nice kind of presentation on this idea of a metrics model of, of um, bringing you know, different metrics together in one place for different reasons. And um, we linked to the doc, you might have to go back a couple of weeks to find that, um, but it was really awesome. And uh, we, we brought it up again last week, we're talking about um, how to you know, kind of bring these metrics together in a digestible way so that uh, people can use them in the context that makes the most sense for them. And so there were a few of us, we decided maybe we should just have like an ad hoc committee to kind of sort this out and figure out how we want to display these on the website and really talk about them um, moving forward. Cause that seems to be kind of the next phase of the metrics, you know, is taking them from those atomic metrics and putting them together. So um, we had a committee that just kind of volunteered, hey, who's interested in working on this problem or this issue of how we're going to visualize these on the website and other places for people. Um, so if you're interested, you know, again, being a part of that, um, feel free to, uh, I don't know if Matt G has really uh, had a time to reach out to everybody to kind of solidify anything, but um, either reach out to him or, you know, indicate your name down below or, or up here somewhere just to indicate that you're interested in, if you are in talking about that. Mm -hmm. Georg, this is, uh, this is related to the, some of the use case work. And it's also related to the uh, data visualization categorization Google Summer of Code project that we had uh, kind of put forward uh, that we that we didn't do. So that's perfect. Thank you. Yeah, I, I look forward to that work. Okay, Sean, Kevin, Vinod, and Lucas, do you want to decide something today? Do you want to wait for Matt? What do you guys want to do? Um, if you want to move forward and like decide, hey, we let's meet and let's meet on this day or whatever. Yeah, I think I think we should decide to meet. I think it would be uh, given the nature of summer, maybe a couple of weeks from now. So maybe meet, maybe right after this meeting or at the conclusion of this meeting, um, not next week, but the following week. That, I, pr I propose that, but yeah. I'm open to other suggestions. So August 3rd uh, at... Um, no, one week after that. 
Okay, so August 10th at um, 10 Pacific. Yeah. Which is noon CDT, yeah, okay, got it. Um, does it make sense uh, for me to post a note to the chaos mailing list? Or is that, is that the best place? Yeah, I think that's a perfect place. Maybe also in the Slack. Okay. Uh, should we add it with the calendar in white of the chaos? Yes. Who will do that? Uh, One who has the rights. I guess, I mean, I can. I can add it to the calendar. All right. And Daniel, you're most welcome to join. It is an open group, like this open source project. I uh, I won't be able to <clears> make <throat> that day, so uh, feel free feel free to meet without me. Yeah, this time of year, I fear whatever day we pick, there will be people who won't be able to meet that day. I'm open to is that I'm open to other times, like I said. It's a tough time of year because lots of people are taking time off. I think that that following week, the August seventeenth would would be better for me. That's fine with me. Works for me. Yeah, it's probably yeah, it's probably a little bit better timing just because I, I think we'll have people starting to roll off of vacation and back into life. And in Europe, vacation is still ongoing all through August. Yeah, depending on the part of Europe, like the Scandinavians, I think, start to come back, but there aren't any here, so. But does, does everyone go on vacation at the same time? <laughs> Pretty much. It's a great place to live. <laughs> so the, the, in Europe, the countries just shut down in August? Yeah. It's just there's nothing going on. Yep. Yep. It's a beautiful, beautiful way to live. Never done it, but it looks good. Okay. Anything else to add to this discussion before we move on? All right. Then we can move on. Um, the next item was another carryover from last week, and that was to talk about our data ethics statement that we worked on. Uh, I wasn't sure if people had had a chance to kind of think about it. Um, I know that we worked on it in the, in the meeting. We took time to actually work in the doc. So I didn't know if that was something that we would be interested in continuing, or do we have, did, have we had enough time to digest? Georg is nodding yes. Is that okay with everybody if we take like five minutes and work on this doc again? I hear no objection, so <laughs> we'll take that as a yes. Okay, so um, Sean, I don't know if you want to pause or if you want to just keep the recording going. Sometimes conversation well, does happen, but I suggest keeping it going only, only because we forget yeah. to restart it easily. Yeah. yeah. And it's easy enough to jump five minutes ahead or yeah. fast forward. Okay, so for anyone who was not here last week, um, Georg has posted a link to this doc that we've been working on. Hi, Tola. <laughs> we haven't seen you in a while. We're glad to see you back. Um, we uh, are working on this similar to what we do in the working groups where we'll just take some time and actually work in the doc and we'll collaborate together and um, we do recommend that you add or you change your status to suggesting instead of editing and that way we can kind of talk about the changes that you're proposing um, so if everyone wants to go into that doc we'll just take five minutes and and actually work on it and if anybody has questions just just yell them out totally fine Can someone who was there last week maybe summarize some highlights of what the discussion were? Because otherwise I'll be spending the next 10 minutes reading everything that was written. Um, really, we were just starting from zero. Um, so 
everything. We just added everything pretty much. <laughs> so, um, Whatever th uh, thoughts everybody has about this data ethics or fair usage, they were adding their thoughts. One discussion arose from this was like, we have to separate uh, chaos community related data ethics and then other which we are defining for the entire open source community as a, like a major. So we should keep these two separate rather than merge them together. And I think we already have that um, chaos data policy document somewhere else. So this one, the data ethics discussion should be only about helping others. I think Matt links to that at the bottom, but you're absolutely right. Yeah. Okay, so it sounds like a lot of the discussion last week was about orienting ourselves on what we actually want to create here. I see that several good points in here that we want to talk about for usage of data, how we reflect different legal requirements, how to help set up policies for collecting and storing data. I feel like this, there's a good outline here for the data ethics document so maybe the second point in this document is a statement of ethics for chaos community as a whole uh, since we are separating it out i think we can extract the values which are useful rather than focusing it as a community chaos community As a reminder from last week, and I think Sophia may have brought this up, and I believe Matt uh, German Prey brought it, brought it up as well. Uh, there are kind of two different things going on here. So this document is not about chaos data ethics. So it, it's not the way we use data. This is about uh, recommendations for uh, data ethics and the use of metrics. Is that correct, Sophia? Uh, so I, I think uh, I think we were getting confused on in uh, in a couple places on this document. So chaos data use ethics is a that is a different conversation and we have we have documents for that elsewhere. Um, I'd like to ask for feedback on um, an idea related to um, data ethics, and that is um, boundaries and um, uh, um, delineations between, um, I don't know, data regions. Uh, so um, typically, um, projects um, have private and public areas. For example, um, corporate projects will have a private repo and a, uh, and a public website. Um, and then often there will be things that are on both sides. And um, a, uh, there's an ethical issue related to um, allowing information to leak from the private to the public sphere.
for example, um, GitHub's um, activity graphic, um, I believe shows activity on private repos in that little status display, um, but they don't show the specifics of it. And so that is a, an example of relevant um, data handling and ethical questions. What are people's thoughts on where that would fit or whether it fits at all? I mean, I think we should explicitly state whether or not we're gonna discuss that impact or not. I mean, I'm, I was sort of of the camp that we would acknowledge elements of overlap in terms of saying, if this data is being collected and stored inside a large vendor like Google, that we are now assuming proprietary um, accountability over it. And that changes the display and usage of the data as well as how we would handle that as a vendor. Um, but not necessarily, we can't impart recommendations once we get into the corporate landscape because that's going to be defined per company policy and they have their own lawyers. So it's more just the acknowledgement that this is really only addressing the parts that are in control and managed by the community. So I maybe I would sort of state, state that explicitly knowing that once that once there is collection management and usage on the the behalf of a corporation that we assume the corporation will will be I don't know will be in control of their own policies usage and accountability around it um, but just again making it focus more on the community so I think it's a, it's a valid point that will need to be addressed but I would propose we focus on the community side what do you think I think that's an elegant way of factoring it. It's clean. No surprise, I've done this before. <laughs> <laughs> so in the at, at the bottom of the document, I tried to pull together the different strands into a outline. This is just loosely from what I see above the different things, just putting it in bullet points. Um, so we can start to have, I don't know, maybe we can turn these into headings or something that we can then describe in more detail and put the right considerations in. Uh, my thought is we start at the top with why do we even have this document? What are the high level concerns? What do we mean with privacy? What the issue with the anonymizing individuals? Why is data handling a problem? And then we go into specific considerations. And I think we can break them out by the different stages or phases that a metrics project goes through. So as someone who is planning to collect data, what are the things you should be thinking about upfront? When you get into data collection, what are the things that you'll be dealing with? Um, data handling, storing it, reporting. Maybe you want to make raw data available. What are the things to think about? And yeah, I, I think we can, I don't know. This is just what came to my mind as we, uh, as I was reviewing everything from last week. Yeah, that makes a lot of sense to me. Sorry, Sophia. I was gonna say, do you want us to edit it? I mean, I think that the approach makes sense. Should we work in the doc or do you wanna just talk through it versus manually editing? 
Oh, go, go right ahead. Go ahead and edit. I just accept that the changes here so that any changes you make, just make changes. It's easier that way. Let's do like four more minutes working in this and then we'll let it sit for another week and we can come back to it.
Okay, this is awesome. Thank you, everyone. This is great. I feel like we're really making some progress. And thank you, Georg, for kind of distilling all of that information into a nice, clear, clean outline. That's perfect. Um, so if everyone wants to kind of just think about this for another week and look over this outline, you know, in the days to come, um, that would be great. And then we'll revisit it next week um, and see where we go from here. And just build it out slowly but surely. So thanks, everybody. Appreciate you and your efforts. Um, okay, so let's move on. The next item we had on there was the metrics quality checklist. And I'm not sure who put this on, but if you would like to talk about that, that'd be great. I put that on there. And one of the things that with uh, Yash and Ritik, as we are talking about the automating the metric release and thinking about our conversations with uh, translations, creating metrics is having more and more dependencies and there are other things that are being triggered and we have more and more requirements for the right format and the right naming convention. And we, the chaos project is growing to the point where it's not enough to live in the heads of a few. We need to formalize it, not just in the handbook, uh, but maybe this is the idea of the checklist is when we create a new metric that we have a checklist of here are all the things that a working group needs to, to do before it can go live on the website or before it can be included in the release. And that checklist can include things like we filled out a question, you know, very simple we used active language versus passive language, if that's a style choice that we want to make. Uh, one requirement we have is we do not use tables because that messes up our PDF generation. Uh, images have a certain naming convention. Did we comply with that? You know, just as a checklist to make sure, yes, we, we did that as a reminder before we move forward, um, institutionalizing those those things. Uh, and then also a checklist for we created an issue for feedback. We created, we added that new metric in the release notes issue. We have alerted the translation community that it's ready for translation. So so there are a lot of things that that need to happen and it's becoming more and more. And the idea is to have a quality checklist so that when we create new metrics, we can just go through, click, 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 click. Yes, we did all of that. I would, uh, I would like to point out that a lot of this stuff has been informally done by Georg and myself during the release process. So the, what we're really talking about here is offloading some of this work to the working groups to make sure that they are giving us these metrics uh, in a form that's usable for the release and also uh, it, uh, in a process that uh, is structured the same for all of the working groups. So I would highly endorse for the checklist because recently I've uh, ma uh, made three releases and I was facing all these issues while I was compiling them. I have to add it to three different pages. I have to check the formatting of the images and all these things. So I would highly endorse for the checklist. This yeah. is really helpful. <clears throat> yeah, I think checklists are pretty common as an organization or technical infrastructure matures and seems like a natural move to me. I think this checklist would actually, would naturally fit. I know, I know one of those checklist items is that the issue for the metric has been created, but I think this checklist would actually naturally fit into that issue for the for the metric so uh, I think that that's the perfect place for it so the, the first thing you do when you release a metric is you create that issue and then you go down through the checklist I think that um, there would be benefits for project management just to help the working group keep track of where they are I agree 
So it could just be like the issue template. Is that what you were saying, Kevin? Yeah. So we, we just create an issue template. And then when you, when we move a metric into release, the very first thing you do is you create that release issue and you paste the, uh, the template checklist into that issue. So it's, it's the very first thing that's there. So it seems to have a lot of consensus or agreement that we want a checklist like this. And so maybe we can brainstorm what are all the elements we need on this checklist so we don't forget a step. I'd proposed having the checklist uh, broken out into content quality for how the metric is written, technical requirements for how the metric is added to the repository and the files associated with it, and then process requirements. And this is alerting the other teams that need to work on the metric. Yeah, I, I like that a lot. I, I will volunteer to create a issue template if that is um, valuable. And I can add my experience to that template. Because I've done this process recently, so I, I, I remember all these things. That's that's awesome. Um, yeah. So it sounds like we note if you can if you can add to this issue, add the other tasks that need to go in, and then when when we are done with that. Well, we'll also ask Yigitik and Rush to make sure we have all the requirements in here. Review this a few times. And then, Lucas, when we are ready, would definitely like your help create the issue template for the working groups. Yep. How oh, should Thank we you. do that follow up work? Sorry, Vinod. No worries. I, I'll take this as an action item and I'll create the list. So uh, I would say that. Uh... Georg and I are probably the product owners on this. Uh, so for final review, I think it probably probably need to tag uh, Georg and myself. Yeah. And I'm happy I mean, to I'm happy to make edits and comment as well. So I'm yeah. I'm fairly familiar with the process. Yeah, I mean my my checklist right now is to check with Kevin. So that makes sense to me. I guess this is like for most of us, check with the Kevin, is it working? <laughs> right. <coughs> so I added a comment to the ticket. Is that well stated? Okay. Thank you, Lucas, yes. Thank you, Georg, for putting that together. That's amazing, and we'll make uh, lives better for everybody. Lucas, can you add? Can you add me as the product owner on that? Yeah. Oh, thank you. I have a. Um, I know we have student updates and a few items. Um, there's a couple things at the end with translation review and choosing swag for ChaosCon. Uh, that should hopefully be quick, and I'd like to just get quick answers to. Sure, you want to bump those up a little bit? Um, yeah. Okay. Maybe the swag would be the easiest one because yeah. it's the most time sensitive. And uh, Matt's proposing t-shirts, coolers, and resistance bands. Uh, let me ask if there's any objections. No, I have no opinion. All right. I like swag. All chaos swag is good. All right. So we're going to go with this. Unless it, okay.
All right, we can, and then Yash, uh, I, I think maybe just, we're looking for, do people are people aligned with the translation guidelines as they're presently defined? And maybe you wanna review quick for us, Yash? We haven't discussed this in the weekly community call. The major discussion has taken place in the Asia Pacific one. Okay. So I'll just give a quick summary that Perfect. the translation team currently is, you know, looking at the working group repositories, looking at the changes that have been done to metrics. So they are having a hard time finding out where the changes have been made. Like, for example, if we uh, change a, just a single word. So we want to make sure that the translated metrics are updated with the original English metrics. Yep. So we are trying to create a process for that. And there have been a lot of questions revolving around the release of translated metrics. So the translations team has been very helpful in that. They have added their comments as well. And hopefully we'll get the doc finalized tomorrow and we can ask for a final community review. That sounds fantastic. Thank you. Let me now return your regularly scheduled order. Nice job, by the way, Yash, thank you. Yes, excellent work. Yash, you're the only student, I believe, on the call. So do you have any other updates you want to share with us? So the Mars for the English release of metrics is ready. We are currently working on the automation of the translated metrics. It's a little different since the structure of the organization of translated metrics is different. We have a, just one repository. So things are a little different, but since half of the process has already been done before, we expect to get this done too. Awesome. Does anybody have questions for Yash? Comments, anything? All right, then we will move ahead. Uh, thank you, Yash. See what you get for coming to the meetings. <laughs> you have to update everyone, but we appreciate it. Thank you. Um, okay, so the next thing is new metrics released for review. We do have some that are um, open right now for review uh, for our continuous release process. Uh, we just want to, or I just listed them here just to make sure people knew that they were out there because some of them are new. Um, so the first one is time inclusion for virtual events, and that is part of the DEI working group. And that's basically making sure that the time of an event is inclusive globally, as, as inclusive as possible. So what measures are being taken to, to make sure that that happens? Um, the next one was event demographics. So that one's just a combination of, we used to have attendee, attendee demographics and speaker demographics as two separate metrics, and we're just combining them into one since they were the same basically asking the same questions. Um, the next one is programming language distribution. And that one was from Common. And that's pretty self-explanatory, I think. Uh, the next one is collaboration platform activity. And that's also from Common. And that's just, again, pretty, pretty self-explanatory, just measuring the activity that's happening on each collaboration platform. Uh, contribution attribution that is um, are, are from evolution and that is um, I think we've talked about that before here but it's just making sure that non code contributions are given some credit um, and, and really um, tracked somewhere. If I recall, that's what that's about. Someone stop me if that's wrong. Uh, and also I think it had something to do with uh, if work is sponsored versus volunteer, I believe. Correct. Yes. Yeah. Um, and then the last one is from value and that's academic open source project impact and that one um, kind of revolves around uh, the value to um, someone trying to get tenure because there are some pretty specific requirements for that and so um, part of that metric is trying to kind of enumerate those and put them into metric form um, so because that's pretty specific to the academic industry um, did i get all that right anybody who knows what i'm talking about hopefully i got that all right 
Yes, sounded right to me. Yeah. Yeah. I do have two comments on this. Uh, working groups, if you could check your repositories, there may be pull requests that were associated with this release that still need to be uh, reviewed and accepted. Uh, and a dish, and I'd like to also remind the uh, working groups to use the uh, use the full metric name in in all of their their naming conventions. So, the the language distribution one was an example of uh, it was a uh, it was language distribution in some places. It was programming language distribution in other places. So just like consistently, always use the full name in uh, naming the files and in mentioning the metrics. We'll put that on the checklist. <laughs> it's a great point. Because those, those titles do change, you know, as we develop the metrics. So just kind of retroactively making sure everything aligns and lines up is, is great. Um, we might want to also check on the spreadsheet too and make sure that it's right on the spreadsheet. Because I know sometimes that doesn't quite go back. Yep, I, I agree. Yeah, just make sure you're always using the the full the full name. Okay, so any questions, comments, anything else to add? Okay, then we're, we'll go ahead. We already talked about translations and we talked about swag. Uh, working group readme template. I think Yash, did you just mention that? I, I put that in. Or Kevin, uh, so sorry. We've had a we've had a few issues with incorrect uh, meeting times. Uh, and part of the issue is that meeting times are listed in some of the readmes. Uh, so as part of the work that Yash and Ritik had done, uh, we created a standard readme template. However, it, it looks like not all of the working groups have moved to that standard readme yet. So I know Evolution uh, isn't using it currently. So I'd, I'd like to ask the, the working groups to, to check and see if they've, if they've made that move to the standard readme. So ideally, we don't want to have any time information in those readmes. We'd rather point them to the participation page and just have one place where we are keeping time information. Do we have somebody from each working group here? that can make sure that that gets on the agenda. Uh, I've created the pull request for the updated readme, but it is under review, like it needs to be reviewed and approved. Did you do the, you did the one for evolution? I thought, uh, you, no, I thought you did for one the for value. value. Yeah. Yes, for the value, for the value. Uh, if nobody's there, I can do it for evolution too, because I have the format, I've done it for the value and be quick and easy for me to do it for evolution. I just need the chairs, who are the chairs, uh, rest of the information I can grab from the repository. And Okay, thank you, Kevin. Yeah, thank you, and, and thank you, Vinod, for taking that action item. Uh, we have two minutes left. If there's, is there anything else people want to bring up or mention something that we talked about already that you wanted to say and didn't? You got two minutes. All right, well, it sounds like everyone is content with the way the meeting went and they've said everything they need to say. So we will go ahead and end now one minute early. You're welcome, you can have that minute back. <laughs> Thank you. Everybody have a good day. We'll see you later. All right, you too. Thanks again. Thanks, bye. Bye.